Welcome to the University of Dundee orthopaedic clinical skills video for examination of the hip. Upon entering the room, introduce yourself and confirm the patient's name and date of birth. Explain what the exam involves and get the patient's consent before continuing. Ask the patient if they are in any pain or discomfort before beginning the examination. It is important to wash your hands thoroughly to prevent the spread of infection. The patient needs to be adequately exposed to allow for the full exam. Begin the examination with inspection. With the patient facing you, look for normal symmetry in the quadriceps muscles. Ask the patient to turn around to inspect from behind. Look for normal muscle bulk in the gluteal and hamstring muscles. Wasting can be a sign of disuse, often secondary to pain or stiffness. To assess gait, ask the patient to walk a short distance, turn and walk back. Look for smoothness and symmetry of movement, as well as any abnormalities of gait, such as an antalgic, Trendelenburg or stiff gait. Observe the patient's face. Note and minimise any discomfort. With the patient still standing, assess the integrity and strength of the abductor muscles by performing Trendelenburg's test. Ask the patient to put their hands on yours for balance and then to stand on each leg and turn. The leg in contact with the floor is the one being assessed. If the abductors are weak, the standing leg will move into adduction and the iliac crest on the contralateral side will move down. This indicates a positive Trendelenburg test. In a negative or normal test, the pelvis will remain neutral. Ask the patient to lie supine on the couch ensuring this is flat. Inspect for any abnormalities. Erythema or swelling on the lateral aspect of the hip could indicate a trochanteric bursitis. Scars from previous surgery should be noticed, as should skin changes, which may indicate certain arthropathies such as psoriasis. You would not expect to see hip joint effusion as the hip is a deep joint. Thomas's test is performed to look for a fixed flexion deformity of the hip. With the examiner standing on the side to be examined, a hand is placed between the patient's lumbar lordosis and the couch. The patient is asked to maximally flex the contralateral hip and knee. The examiner's hand will feel the lumbar lordosis occluding. The examiner observes the ipsilateral thigh. If the thigh remains lying flat on the couch, there is no fixed flexion deformity and the test is negative. If the thigh leaves the couch as the lumbar lordosis is occluded, there is a fixed flexion of the hip joint. Inspection of the attitude of the limb is useful. Using a measuring tape, both true and apparent leg lengths should be measured and each compared to the contralateral side to assess for limb shortening. For true leg length, measure from the anterior superior iliac spine to the tip of the medial malleolus. This measures only the actual limb length. For apparent leg length, measure from the ziphy sternum to the medial malleolus. This measurement incorporates any pelvic obliquity or lumbar scoliosis which would affect the apparent length of the limb during gait. Before palpating, ensure the patient is not in any pain. Ask the patient to let you know if there is any discomfort on palpation. Begin on the lateral aspect of the proximal femur over the greater trochanter. Then palpate over the anterior superior iliac spine and work medially towards the midpoint of the groin. The midpoint of the groin directly overlies the hip joint. Tenderness at this point indicates hip pathology. Tenderness on palpation of the medial groin may indicate a pubic rami fracture. When assessing the range of motion of the hip joint, it is important to first examine the contralateral or normal side for comparison. Concentrating now on the affected side, ask the patient to flex their hip as far as possible. This is the active range of movement. Assess for further passive flexion. A normal range of passive flexion in the hip is 100 
to 130 degrees. With the hip and knee flexed to 90 degrees, internally rotate the hip. A normal range of internal rotation is approximately 15 degrees. Now externally rotate the hip. A normal range of external rotation is approximately 40 degrees. Remember to use the anterior aspect of the thigh as a guide to internal and external rotation movement of the hip. Do not be fooled by foot position as this is misleading. When testing a deduction, stabilise the contralateral hip with one hand and use the other hand to passively adduct the hip. A normal range is approximately 15 degrees. Then move the limb into abduction. A normal range for this movement is approximately 45 degrees. The examination is now complete. Thank the patient and allow them to redress before explaining any relevant examination findings. Ensure you wash your hands before moving on.